And my project today is reverse painting on a plate. And this is so easy because you can just take any sort of coloring book type drawing and just paint right onto the back of a plate. Want to see? Yes, and then I have a question afterwards. Okay. The first step in this project is to pick your clear plate. They are a little bit different and I want to point out to you what you should look for. As you can see, these two plates are very similar in size, but this one has a very definite flat back to it, which is smaller. This one does not have that rim on it, so it gives you more of an area to paint on. This plate I found at my local independent craft store the other plate I found at a thrift shop. So if you want to find a glass plate that's specific for this type of technique, check at your local craft store and see if they carry these larger, broader backed plates. This was in a section where they were showing how to do reverse collage. The next step is to be sure that you clean this completely with alcohol. You want to wipe off any residue and fingerprints. And we're going to be working on the back side, but of course I like to clean the front side too. You can come back and clean the front, but it's nice when you're working to have both sides clean. So be sure that you clean it very thoroughly with your alcohol. Just rub it off with a paper towel. And then you are ready to work. You can find patterns from all sorts of different sources. There are certainly pattern books. You can find patterns from coloring books. This was a pattern that my sister Eco Heidi had created for one of her books. So it gave me the choice of a small or a large ball. I added the lines onto it because I wanted to put a lined pattern onto my Christmas ball. I am just using the blue tape to hold my pattern in place so pattern side down on the front and just use your blue tape to tape that right down to the plate and my choice on this was to actually offset the ornament down just a little bit on the plate you can certainly place it wherever you would like to I'm using the tulip slick dimensional paint to actually trace the lines this project is very, very easy because you can just trace the lines. I always like to test my slick paint first. Sometimes there's a little bit of separation to begin with. You might get a little bit more of like a clear liquid. So make sure that you test it to make sure that you're getting the, the pure paint out. And the next thing you do is you just start tracing your pattern. If you go on just to a test piece of like wax paper first, that's always helpful. That gives you an idea for how much you need to squeeze your bottle, how much control that you have for squeezing out as consistent a line of the paint as possible. The other thing is you want to be sure that you use a full bottle to start with because you, if you don't, then you may need to continue to shake it down so that you don't have any spatters or sometimes it kind of spurts out at you when an air bubble gets in. So be sure that you have a nice full bottle of paint to start. So as you can see, that's very, very easy to just trace your lines there. Straight lines, oh, I think they're a little bit more difficult. But again, don't worry if they're not exactly perfect. That's what's fun about this project. This is handmade. This is not about being completely perfect. Some of my lines are a little bit thinner. Sometimes where I'm starting back up, they're a little bit thicker. But I'm not going to worry about that at all. If there's other patterns you want to put on here besides just straight lines, you could certainly draw 
anything that you want to. It'd be fun also if you wanted to put names on. Just remember you're working in reverse. So when you set up your artwork, you need to make sure that that is set up correctly. Now that I have finished putting my actual design on, on my finished example, I also went in and just put polka dots around the entire plate. So I'm going to continue, finish up my polka dots, and then this needs to set aside to dry completely. It depends on your weather, where you are, as to how quickly this paint is going to dry. If I were making a whole set of plates, I would let them set aside to dry overnight and wait to do the next step until this paint is completely dry. So I'm going to finish up here and then I will show you the next step. I've left my plate to dry overnight so now we are ready to take the pattern off and take a look at the black lines. Sometimes you need to come back in and use a craft knife and just clean up some of your lines. If I press the tip of my paint applicator too much into the plate, sometimes that means that I'm getting more of a split line rather than a solid line. So I come back in and just use my, my craft knife and clean up any areas that I want to. The next thing is to start painting and I always recommend that you use glass paint for a project like this. When you have glass paint it means it's going to be more durable and so if you don't have glass paint you can try regular acrylic paint but remember it's always handcraft hand wash so you have to be very very careful when it comes time to actually wash your plate. You just use a soft brush to start applying your paint. Now this is going on the back side of the plate inside the pattern lines that you have just painted. And I have found that it definitely takes two to three coats of paint to get the coverage that I like. The first coat you can see the brush strokes the second coat helps that, and the third coat really gives you uh, a nice opaque coverage. So don't worry too much about this first coat of paint, but definitely get into the corners. It's very easy to miss one little spot in the corner, and it's okay if you paint over the black line because you're not going to see that. Try not to overpaint at this point also because you can, you just end up pulling the paint right back up. So one coat, let it dry completely, and then apply at least another coat. And sometimes it takes three. It depends on the color too. Some colors give you a lot more coverage. I love this technique because you don't have to be real careful about when you're applying the paint. As I mentioned, you can go over that black line because you're not going to see it from the front. So let's turn this over and take a look and you can see how that's starting. I am going to continue to apply my paint to the entire back of the plate. I have finished painting my plate with several coats of paint and now it's time to finish off the back of the plate with a final coat. I like to use just black paint and you could also use gold, that would be very pretty. It just gives me one more layer of sealing on the plate. So I'm using my black and I just start brushing it over the entire back of the plate. Covering all of the areas 
And again, I would put a couple of coats of the black or the gold paint onto the back of the plate. Really let this paint dry in between the coats because you'll pull up the layer underneath it if you don't do that. So finish applying your overcoat paint to the back of your plate and then you are ready to serve some lovely holiday treats on your ornament plate. Something else that I created to match my plate is this placemat. And what I did is I used the Aline's Fabric Fusion Peel and Stick Sheets to the back of fabric. And then I just peeled that liner paper off and put the pieces of fabric, just like an applique, just peel and stick right onto my placemat. Once those are down, you use your same Tulip Slick paint to draw around the outside edge. Let that dry completely and now you have a beautiful matching set for your holiday. So we'll see if Heidi can remember the question she was going to ask me. Yes, I can remember it. Oh. <laughs> I was going to ask you, where did you get the plate? I got the plate. Well, actually, <laughs> depends which stack. This specific oh. one I got from the local craft store. Mm -hmm. But Heidi went into her stash, as she always does. And can you see this, the stack yeah, over I there? Know, I yeah. still have them. Yeah. I This one gave me a broader base. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you have... The, the smaller space in the center. Because it has a little bit of a rim around it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so at the craft store, my local craft store, which is the independent craft store, they had these that have a much broader. Oh, cool. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. And they were showing how you actually reverse collage onto these. Mm -hmm. And so they specifically purchased them in the store for that. I love that. Perfect.